We'll start with the legal system, and to do that, I am grateful to have on the set of the Means Report no stranger to anybody in this community. He is the chief state court judge for Richmond County, Judge David Watkins, uh, a longtime member of Augusta's legal community, has been on the bench for quite a while as well. Uh, judge, thank you for taking the time. Brad, thank you very much. I don't know if it's good or bad that I'm no stranger to those <laughs> in the community. Well, In know, infamy has its place, I guess. No, no, it's for all good reasons. Thank you. And uh, today is certainly no exception. Tell us pretty much what accountability court is. Is it okay to say it's a second chance court? Uh, it, 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 yeah, it is okay to say that. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm gonna do is give you the uh, official sterile definition in my distillation of that definition. Um, and uh, accountability court is a court program designed to change the behavior of repeat offenders arrested for, in this case, DUI or drugs. The purpose of the program is to protect public safety by combining treatment of the underlying substance abuse problem with intensive supervision and testing to address the root cause of impaired driving in this case. And kind of what that means is this. We have a number of people who come through that, the court system. It ends up being a revolving door and that is because they are coming through for criminal behavior mm -hmm. that's fueled by, in this case, DUI, uh, driving while impaired. So what we try to do is instead of constantly addressing the symptoms, we try to get to the root cause. What does that look like? In this case, it looks like accountability court or DUI court. Have you, has the accountability court been busy? Extremely busy, mm -hmm. uh, yes. It's it, tough to pick up the paper and go to the DUI section, if you will, and not see a ton of people in there every time you look at it. Especially if you're looking at the jail report. Yeah, I know, it's chock full of it, right? Always. Well, and always. so when someone before the advent of the accountability court went through the legal process, is it likely, and you touched on this in your first answer, that they would just go back out on the streets and get drunk or get high again and come right back before you? We always suspected that it was. Anecdotally, we knew that it was, but when the data came out that confirmed what we knew to be true, I can say with much confidence, yeah, that's exactly what was happening. Um, you bring someone in, DUI, you send them to jail, they, get, they dry out. Mm -hmm. But if you don't address that which caused them to be in front of you in the first place, it's more than likely you're going to see a repeat offender. That it's, is those who you, you catch. And so is it a program? What does it look like once they check in with you and they're standing there wondering what their sentence is going to be? Is it a multi-step program you send them off to? It, it is. And I need to say that different courts have different models, different formats. Um, and ours is... is, is is tailored for our particular county. Mm -hmm. But if they are accepted into the program, and we have what we call a hybrid pro program, which is post plea um, or and, and pre adjudication. That is, we bring them in and we basically say, we're gonna give you a chance to come into the program and to equip you with the tools to, to, uh, to graduate from the program. Once you graduate from the program, then you're gonna come in front of me for final sentencing. So I'm, you come in, uh, David Weiss gets picked up for a DUI. He realizes he has a problem. He wants some help. He'll go in, I, I go in front of someone, say, I, I, I need a program. Can I get into this program? You can come into this program. If you, accountability court, own up to what you did, I will. I'm, I'm guilty. I will accept your plea as guilty, will give you a chance to go to the program, to graduate from the program, then you come back in front of me if you complete the program to receive the legal benefits and other benefits that you get if you finish the program. Is a first time offender more likely to get accepted than say somebody with their fifth DUI? You know, it, it, it depends because initially uh, a first offender was a mark that this person may be abusing alcohol but is not tagged as a, with a substance use disorder, mm -hmm. a bona fide alcoholic. But over a period of years, what we've seen is, again, as I alluded to, this may be your first time getting caught for DUI, but it doesn't mean it is your first time driving while under the influence. And you may have some other instances, uh, incidents with the court um, that had alcohol-related themes, family violence, um, or you may have been speeding, 
or um, you may have been stealing and that was fueled by some substance abuse inebriated state. So what we've learned is, yes, a first offender uh, can qualify or we can take them in the program, but what we are tasked to do, and in this, Brad, this gets back to your original point, uh, we almost have more than we can say grace over. Mm -hmm. What we try to do is target those who are most in need, and those are usually high-risk offenders. How do we identify those? This is your second DUI, this is your third DUI. So sometimes we're required to take those who are, it's kind of like triage. Sure. Addressing those who are most in need, hoping we can get to the rest later or something will intervene. We won't need to get them. To All right. Them later. So you've pinpointed those bona fide addicts, those yeah. people best suited for the program, and they go through it with flying colors. Are they less likely to go back through that revolving door? Have you seen, have you been doing it long enough to see that once they graduate, if you will, they don't come back? Uh, I've seen both because yeah. the variables that, that ultimately determine the success of one individual or the other are, are just, just that. They are so varied that it, there is not one set magical formula. Mm -hmm. So we have some who come back um, where second, maybe third, nothing else on their record and they may be in front of us again or they relapse and we have those who are um, what it, old salts may, may call just an irreparable knee walking drunk. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can do. But they were given a chance, they succeeded, and their sobriety continues, and it has been prolonged. Real quick, when the person does come back through, when they, when they repeat offend, uh, do you just kind of at that point have no choice but to take the old school route and say, we're going to lock you up? No, I, and to be honest with you, it, 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 that goes to my, my, my staff would call it my metamorphosis, mm -hmm. my evolution, my, my education. Initially, I thought that because I, I, I presumed that this was more of a, a, of a, of a choice. But as those who are, have been in this longer than I, once you understand better the causes of addiction, that it actually hijacks the brain, then it's not, a, mount, it's not a, a, a matter of just having, having the want to. It, ha, it then deals with having the capability, the capacity, and addiction has an, the, the, it destroys both your will, both your desire, both your capacity, and the whole process of recovery is to slowly but surely build back up that which addiction has stolen from you. So we may get some who are back in front of me, and I may say, and I have on occasion, you know what, we're gonna allow this person to try this again. Mm. We're gonna allow this person to try this again. Whereas someone else, we may say, no. And that may, no may be because this person is not ready. So I, it, it just depends, those are some of the variables. Well, I love what you're doing individual by individual, and it sounds like that's your approach, to judge each person, to evaluate each person as they come in. Big picture though, are we making yeah. a dent in the number of DUIs, the number of charges that are being levied against people out there, or is it still huge? Um, we are, but it, it, that depends on how you're measuring. I was just reading some, some stats the other day, and I just kind of brought this, mm -hmm. and if you're talking about impact, and, and, and so it, it comes down to how you may define success, if you define it in terms of, of economics as part of that uh, definition, spending for accountability court participants have saved, uh, the estimates are, um, close to $5,000 per individual who's in the court system. So in other words, we may spend 15000 some odd do dollars if a person goes through accountability court, wherein we may spend $20,000 if that person is in incarcerated. So there's a difference there of at least $5,000 that, ha that has been saved. So, and then you talk about the other aspects of the other impact, which can be direct or indirect um, uh, health care that it, it, it cost, sure. uh, juvenile care that it cost. And then when you start adding, adding up those numbers, the savings of trying to get someone help, it ends up being cheaper for the system that has to address that, either by locking them up and the incidental detrimental cost to 
society. Yeah, no, you're reducing that burden. Yeah, we reduce the burden. All right, so we tune in to 95.1 WGAC, and we listen to the show you've got going. Uh, can people call in and get, uh, I don't want to say legal advice from you, but maybe they can. can uh, tell me about the format of your show and, and how people can benefit. The format, uh, we call it First Step, and First Step is indicative of what the format is, because what we basically try to do, it is not a, a, a law talk type program, right. by the way, that comes on after me is, is very good. <laughs> right after turn you. Turn in, tune into that. <laughs> Um, but what we try to do is encourage people to take the first step and get some help. We try to encourage them to take the first step. That is, that person who may be experiencing and suffering from some form of substance abuse, uh, substance addiction, uh, d drinking disorder, whatever it is you want to call it. We try to encourage that person to take the first step. And we also try to encourage the people who suffer from that to take the first step to get some help. Family members, those who may end up being a codependent or enabling relationships. So that's what we try to do and we do that by um, education. We do that by interviewing and, and bringing on experts. We do that by testimonials. I've been here, I've done that, I've been the hit. Can I say that? But then back, sure. but I don't, I don't want you going there. And the, 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 the culmination of that, the, that we, we hope is to encourage our target audience, those who are suffering, either directly or indirectly, to motivate them, to inspire them, to cause something to click that will cause them to go get some help. So that, that's kind of the format. I have a few seconds left, sure. and it's just to ask you on a personal level what kind of satisfaction you've gotten out of seeing success stories. I would guess that people have come back before you and said, thanks, my life is on track because of you. Yeah, it has, but I will tell you, um, in a lot of ways, my life is probably better on, on track and more on track because of them. So it has been just as much a benefit to me as it is, as it has been to the people I purportedly have helped. Well, we appreciate you and uh, what your team at Accountability Court does, Judge Watkins, and I appreciate you taking the time to come here today. Thank you, Brad. Thank you for having us on. Absolutely. We appreciate it. Well, the door is always open. You can find out more information about Judge Watkins' First Step weekly radio show on our website, or you can just stare at your television screen right now and find out it's every Sunday, 6 to 7 p.m. Our friends at WGAC 95.1 and AM 580 have it for you. You can also go to WGAC.com and take a look at the good work that Judge Watkins is doing, taking people, in many cases, in their darkest hour and allowing them to see the light.